hopefully it is live. I'm not quite sure though. So hello. Uh, I was going to do this stream tomorrow. In fact, I set up the event uh, to do it tomorrow, but I realized that I had everything already set up and um, I didn't know whether I'd get back in football from football in time. So we're doing it tonight instead. Uh, so what I'm planning to do, let me show you the bench. Uh, how do I do that? Would be helpful if I turned on the camera, wouldn't it? So there we go. And um, we'll just focus, focus. There we go. So this is what we're sort of messing with today. In fact, I can probably put my face in there, can I? Yeah, there I am. Hello. <laughs> Let's make me a tiny bit bigger. Oh, except for that's now upside down. Hang on a minute. Uh, transform. Flip vertically. Now it's back to front. <laughs> transform. Flip horizontally. There we go. Now it's the right way up. Uh, yeah, you should have pretty good audio and it should be in sync with my... F Hang on, let's test it, shall we? It should be in sync with my face. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. Anyway, we're looking at this Muirhead Decade Condenser. So this is a capacitance box, essentially. Uh, and it means that uh, the whole thing's one microfarad, sort of. So it goes up to 10 on this range here, and that's one microfarad. In fact, let me bring a multimeter in, and I'll show you... Does that have, mm. okay, I'll just have to hold it up against the thing. Oh, the cables are all, there we go. All right, capacitance mode. Let's bung it up out of the way a little bit so you can see that. And let's probe the box. So we should be looking at one microfarad. Oh, it doesn't, it's not. Uh, yeah, pretty much 1.015. And if I can deftly hold on to those somehow, there we go, with one hand, um, I can. show you that this these do indeed change but not by a large degree these ones this one's a bit funny actually this uh, thing so um if i just turn that down you'll be able to see this goes down to i don't know i can't see what it's on hang on it's on three so it should be about 300 if i take all of these to zero is that 300 nanofarad or is it it says 400 doesn't it oh there we go it was in between ranges so it's a a make before break kind of switch. So um, I want to. I use this not all that often. I have to say. Uh, let's just get away from this thing for a minute. So I I use that thing occasionally, but not all that often. And it's a beautiful thing. So I <laughs> I actually have it downstairs in my living room. Um, because it looks so nice, I've got it on the shelf, usually, uh, unless I'm using it. But I want to have it do something, because the little dials look brilliant. In fact, um, if I jump back to the thingy, uh, it's all like Bakelite. So this is sort of plastic, and the box itself is wood. Oh, God, it's really heavy. Uh, the box itself is wood. In fact, I did a video about it a while back now. Um, and do I have the chat anywhere here? <laughs> Hang on, let me do a little pop out chat so I can see it. Uh, so yeah, I, it's, it's beautiful. Like it looks really, really nice. And I like old stuff anyway. Can I tilt the camera slightly upwards? Is it not, is it not on axis? Hang on a minute. I think that is, it is straight down. You can't hear me because I was away from the microphone. Um, that is straight down onto uh, the thing. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. 
Uh, so yeah, it's it's a beautiful bit of kit, and I would love to use it for other things rather than just this uh, as a decade condenser because I don't use that kind of kit very often. Uh, in fact, trimmer sort of pots are, are just as useful. Pots, trimmer capacitors are just as useful, really. So what I would like to do is use one of these. This is a 12 volt AC or DC bulb. It's one of these um, sort of filament ones. In fact, let's, uh, you could probably see it a bit better here. Let's try and focus in. So yeah, it's one of these ones where you've got uh, some sort of strips of LEDs. So there are a lots and different ones on these. In fact, I can power it up now. We can have a little look. Let's see if these will stretch. No, let's gang them together. I'm gonna need a couple more of these, I think. So that is positive. Oh God, I need another one. <laughs> Where am I going to find another crocodile clip? Ah, right here. Well, that's confusing. Never mind. There are, uh, <laughs> I've mixed up my uh, positive and negative a little bit. Right, let's uh, hook that one on there. Turn my power supply on. Right, I want to run them at nine volts. Um, I don't want to run it at 12 because they're too bright at 12. Uh, so let's just hook that one. Actually, let's turn it on first. And oh, so that's it at nine volts. Let's come out a little bit and then I can. I'm going to just dim it down a little bit by limiting the current, I think. Oops. Well, that hasn't worked all that well. <laughs> okay, this is it. Um, how's it running at five volts? Hang on a minute, let's... Change that back. Uh, you can barely see that. Let's bring it up a little bit. Okay, cool. Let's uh, zoom in a little and see if we can't. I'm trying to focus. This is not. There we go. So that's sort of the arrangement. You've got lots and lots of LEDs on that. I don't. They can't be paralleled if they're running at 12 volts. So they must be sort of ganged together. But I like this little bulb. It looks kind of cool. So uh, we're going to be using one of those. Now, running at uh, nine volts, it can take up up to around, what was it? That's, uh, that's 360 milliamps, which is cool. That's fine. Oh, did the camera just go a bit funny then when I, uh, yeah, I think it did when I <laughs> turned off my power supply, a little bit of a surge there. It's powered on the same, same socket, I think. So um, I want to basically, I'm going to read the capacitance on here. I did look into, and I don't know if you, you might have seen a tweet, um, but I did look into, I keep looking at the wrong camera, <laughs> sorry. I did look at using a 555 timer. I wanted to sort of do it without a microcontroller. So I looked back in on a video I did about three years ago, which was uh, using the 555 timer in a stable mode. Um, and while you can easily change the frequency, 
um, using a capacitor. Um, and so it could be this capacitor, uh, but I, I tried it and it just doesn't, doesn't work. And then I had a look at how I can change the, the duty cycle. So, cause it's essentially PWM, I'm just shrinking and enlarging that duty cycle, but I need to use resistance in order to change the duty cycle. So it doesn't quite work, unfortunately. And one thing I really don't want to do is sort of damage this because I think it's really quite cool. So we're going to be using um, an Arduino. I, I think I want to do it on an AT Tiny 85, except for they're a bit of a, a pig to, to program and then to transfer and test. So we're just going to be using an Uno. Um, and then later on, um, when I get around to putting it in a little project box, will program up an AT Tiny 85 to do it because I should have it it needs what three pins three four pins so I should be able to do it maybe actually that would ruin the reset pin actually so I might have to reprogram it still um we can use a different one I've got some AT Tiny 2322 I don't know what they are 20 <laughs> you know the the larger 16 pin ones. Anyway, I've also got some of these 80 mega uh, 328 uh, dash PU chips. Is it PU? That might be the, no, AU is the one on the on the SMD one. So I've got some of those, so we can do it that way. Either way, we're gonna be using the Uno today. Um, let's just jump back to the G7 with my little face there, hello. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be doing that. I've got a breadboard. And we're gonna be using a MOSFET, I think. I'm not quite sure which one. I've got a couple to choose from. So I've got um, the FQP30N06L, but I think that's an N channel. And I think I want a P channel. So is this one a P channel? Let's have a look. These are NPD. Oh, no, sorry, NDP6020P. Did I just read the same number? No, I don't think so. Let's have a little look at that. Um, let's jump on to the interwebs. So NDP60. Well, that was quick. Okie doke. Oh, you need to see the screen, don't you? Of course you do. Hang on a minute. Let's do that. Um, this one? That one. That's the one. Okay, so this is the, so this is a P-channel MOSFET. So I've got a huge bag of these. There's probably about, I say huge bag. There's about 10 in there. So we'll use one of these. It's got, um, Let's have a look at the data sheet, shall we? Technical data sheet. Mm. Let's get rid of that. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. We want to have a look at um, VGS. So gate threshold voltage. Okay, well that should work. How many amps can I throw through this thing? It's a big package, so yeah, we'll be fine. Sorry, I'm going to say hello to some people um, because I haven't I haven't done that yet, have I? So uh, Gregor's here, Gary's here. Hello, Gary. Um, have I got that thing? Uh oh, where is it? There you go, Gary. It's going to be on its way to you. So um, Gary managed to ruin his 4081 on his uh, binary clock kit. So I'm going to pop another one in the post for him. And if he manages to fix it, that's a good thing. Um, we've got Bo here. Uh, Electronics Workshops here. Dave's here. Hello, Dave. How are you doing, mate? Uh, Elliot's World, hello. Uh, Michael Stevens is here, hello. Uh, looks like something from the 19, late 1950s. Love to see the back of this. Um, well, you can actually, um, but there is nothing on the back. It's all scratched up, mind. Gosh, it's really, really heavy. 
so it's just a sort of serial number on this on this side. Oh, it's very difficult to angle it correctly because of the light there. But yeah, oh god, I almost dropped it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've there's a video. If you go on my channel and search for Muirhead, so that's spelt M M U I R H E A D. There is a video of me taking the back off this thing, um, or the front off, because the whole thing just comes out. It's a big wooden case with these uh, dovetail joints in it. It's pretty fancy. Oh, and Vulcan Space is here. We had a chat on um, on Twitter, and I said that uh, <laughs> I said that my kits were going on Tinder. Um, rather than Tindy, so that was a nice little autocorrect mistake. I do remember, yeah. I've got Murta. Uh, Adam Welch is here. Hello, mate. How are you doing? We've got Sub Subby Girl AWD. Hello. Uh, PSIQ. Uh, yeah, the NE555, I tried it. I tried it. Honestly, I did. But I couldn't get um, full-scale um, PWM, even though that's the circuit that I did three years ago. It was the full-scale PWM from zero to uh, pretty much 100%. I think it goes to 99. But um, it it just didn't work. Um, so I couldn't do it. Not, not with the capacitance on here, without adding a... A, uh, uh, a variable resistor. What the hell are they called potentiometer so without adding one of those I couldn't make it work and I wanted to be able to use the dials on the front without damaging it um, so we've got Max Ince hello, hello there I haven't seen you for a while have I I haven't seen your little icon for a while Jens is here and so's Jim hello and Wild Scotsman here too I don't know if you can send a link, but I'll give you the power for now. <laughs> don't do anything. Yeah, I want to use the dials. So um, I didn't want to use a, a potentiometer. I can do it with a potentiometer. Um, it's basically the exact same circuit that I did before. It's the couple of diodes that you steer the, the trigger and the charge. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do that. I just want to use this. So let, let's kind of get started, really. Um, the core of this is going to be from, uh, where is it? Ah, here it is. It's going to be from this, the capacitance meter and RC time constants thing on the Arduino website. And I've used this before. If you remember, I did a project with a little Robert's radio. I can't remember the model now, but... Um, I wanted to use the tuning capacitor from there to actually tune in uh, internet radio. So I would read the the uh, the value of that sort of tuning capacitor, and then change the the digital radio station or the streamed radio thing based on that. And so that works fine, and I think we'll employ it again in this case. So this goes through all the details about how you read a capacitor and at what point is it pretty much fully charged. So you've got, it says here, uh, voltage at one time constant equals 63.2% of the charging voltage. That's what you're looking for, essentially. Not only that, do they give you a little schematic here, which is fantastic, but they give you the code as well, which is even better. So we're going to be following this schematic exactly, um, almost. I mean... Yeah, no, it will be exactly. Um, we'll follow that exactly. And then we're going to be triggering a MOSFET with the Arduino, I think, based on the values that we receive. I think we're going to have to fiddle with this a bit because I don't want it to return the actual value of the capacitor. Um, yeah, if I, if I were to return the actual value of this capacitor, it would give me one microfarad or it might return it in nanofarads, but actually I want to somehow change, not the resolution exactly, but the range that it gives me back. So we might change our value of uh, the charge or discharge resistor, probably the charge resistor, 
because the discharge is just to get rid of the charge and they counts when it gets up to the full uh, 63% or, or whatever it is. But yeah, I'll change the charging capacitor, I think, so that it extends the length of time. So it thinks it's a larger capacitor essentially than it is. Um, and then we'll map that value onto something. I can't remember, P-channel MOSFET, that's, you have to hold that high, don't you, to turn it off and low to turn it on. I think that's right. That might be an end channel though. We'll have to sort of play with that. But let's get rid of this beautiful muir head thing for now. Uh, actually, can I just shove it to the back? Oh God, it's so heavy. I don't know how much it weighs. It'd be good to get, I've probably got some scales, but I don't know if they'll be good enough for that. You know what? It can't sit on the bench. It's gonna have to move. Oh. Okay, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll test the circuit with, with something else. So let's, um, you guys can come in a lot closer than that. Let's try this. And focus. That looks about right. So uh, I haven't got the chat open. Where is it? <laughs> I'm really rubbish at this. Let's try that one. That looks to be right. What's this one? Oh, that's exactly the same. I've got two open. Ah, oh, Brian's here. Hello, Brian. I was hoping that um, our streams weren't going to clash because that would have been annoying. I watch a lot of Brian's streams. You should go on it. He's got a Twitch channel. He does his streaming on instead of, of YouTube. So, um, or as well as, I'm not sure, but he likes Twitch as a platform. And I like going to, I watch some gaming things on, on Twitch. So um, I've got an account on there and I go and watch his streams. You should check him out. So P channel should be low to switch on and N channel is high. Okay. Uh, we're using a P channel, I think. So let's get one of those in the board while we can. How this surface you have there is called. Is it the, the mat here you're talking about? It's just a, uh, a self-healing cutting mat made by a company called Ansio. They are my favorite brand of cutting mat. They are fantastic. Um, if you look back on some post bag videos, you'll find a link, I think. Uh, so we've got a little MOSFET there. That is only there for a minute. It's not going to be there for very long. Let's get some other components. What do we need? Let's have a look. So we need, uh, let's jump, we can jump back to that other view, can't we, for this. So I'm going to need a resistor, a capacitor. Oh no, that's the capacitor we're testing. So we'll bung one in just so we can test it out. And then a discharge resistor. So let's have a look. I've got this, um, this big old box of blowing capacitors. <laughs> this huge box of various values, and it cost me like three quid or something delivered. Might be a little bit more, but um, we've got that that we're gonna be using. So let's um, keep this schematic on screen for a little bit. And I need a 220 ohm capacitor. Oh gosh, this might be the the most boring part, me looking for capacitors. <laughs> 270, 330. I don't suppose it particularly matters, but we'll find the right ones. Um, I feel like I should just, and you know what, I'll put it on the so you know that I'm still here and doing something. Um, I'm just looking through these capacitors. 27, 75K, it's not these. Let's just get them all out, like a big wodge. It will be the last ones I look at, so I'm just gonna look at the bottom of the box first. Just, just check that they're not there. They aren't there, okay, so. 270. 270 might do, so I'll put those to the side. 220. Oh, amazing. Right, 220. And then what? Oh, it just said we can specify our own. So let's get a couple of different values for the other capacitor. So if you look at the, the diagram again, 
So you can see we've got one resist, okay, diagram here, one resistor here that we change for ourselves. So just in this code here, it's a bit small, isn't it? There we go. So in this code here, you've got define resistor value. So this is the one that's charging up your capacitor. So you, uh, if you had a larger capacitors or larger capacitors that you were going to, to measure, then you want a lower value resistor. So they charge faster. So you get a quicker reading. Um, or you can use a, a low, like a higher one and then you just have to wait for your reading, wait for it to charge up. But if you're reading smaller value capacitors, then you need to give the, the microcontroller a, a chance, essentially. So you're going to want to have it pretty high. So let's grab a 10K. We'll see what kind of values we get with that. Uh-oh, what did I do with the... Oh, no. I've put those 220s somewhere now. Oh, there they are. So we'll grab a 10K 220. Uh, what else do we have? 10K, 220. Should we grab a meg? 15K, 150. 150 might do, so let's grab some of those. God, there's a lot in here. Again, I'm not looking at chat again, sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, PSIQ, I don't know how you say your name, but I've, um, yeah, I, it's sort of similar, although your diodes are in a different place to mine, are they? Oh, one's a Zenodiode, I see, so that's, it's clamping the voltage down, so the any 555's running off 5 volts. They can run off, like, 16 volts, the NE555, I think, up to 16 volts. Uh, oh, and you're doing the diode thing for the trigger. Yeah, um, yeah. I just want to be able to use the uh, use use the dials on the on the thing. So let's. I want something in the meg range. Let's see what I've got. God, where are all the meg ones? That's 680, so maybe that's enough if I can't find any meg ones. One meg. Anything more than that? 10 meg? God, I don't need that. I think we'll make do with what we've got now. One meg's surely enough. Okay, let's put these away. So we've got quite a few here now. Crafty Crofty FX is here as well. Hello. And Cheetah Kid. Right, so let's start off with a 150K. Uh, and again, we're not going to, in fact, do you know what? We'll do the 10K one because that's in the code. And I'll show you what I mean about um, not really wanting the exact range uh, just because the number's too small to map, I think. Or well, the range is too small that it'll give me, I would have thought. Uh, but we'll find out. So that's our 10K. And then we want a 250. I feel like it's a bit washed out, the video. Let me, um, let me alter something on the camera, increase the contrast somewhat. Um, don't know what that is. Luminance level, teleconversion. <laughs> I don't know what all these things are. Filter settings. Oops. Well, that. Uh... 
That looks, does that look better? <laughs> what kind of, I don't know what I'm doing now. You'll have to bear with me. Let's just go with no effects. Where's the back button? That one. Um, no, I don't know what I'm doing with it. So it looks fairly washed out, doesn't it? That's a bit annoying. We'll just go with it though. That's, um, that's just gonna be what it is, unfortunately. So let's see, right, let's get these. Oh God, I've forgotten which one's which. If only I could read the blooming codes. Let's see, 10K is an easy one. Okay, 10K. So 10K is gonna be our charge. This is our discharge. So we wanna to discharge to ground. Oh, and charge is going into a pin on the Arduino, isn't it? So let's throw that in there. In there, let's try and get that on camera. And we'll give it a bit of space because we need to put our capacitor in there. So let's grab a cap from somewhere. What's this one? It's some really ugly 330 microfarad will take ages to charge. Let's not use that one. What's this one? A 10 microfarad, that will be fine. Uh, what does the blooming schematic say? <laughs> uh, there we go. So put our capacitor to ground, just like that. And let's get our Arduino on the case. And let's copy this code out. So we're gonna just take this entire bit of code. There might be a download link, but we're just gonna copy it. What's that? Oh, hello. That is much better. And then we'll paste it in here. And let's save this as Um, your head box. Okay, so we're gonna leave it as it is. So let's connect up our charging stuff. I'm gonna need power. Oh, I can probably put you back on the old G7 and I'll put my face in, but honestly, I'm gonna be like leaning over. It's gonna be a bit weird, in fact. There we go, so we're gonna want five volts. Let's throw five volts in onto the positive just there. And we're gonna need ground, so let's put that in. Let's try and bring this into view, shall we? Is that five volts? Ground, yep. Yeah. Ground can go over there. And charge pin and discharge pin. Do I have any more blooming wires? Well, there's a really long one there. so. Uh, that's our charge pin. So charge pin, according to the code, is pin 13. I should probably program this Arduino first. Tools. Okay. Ah. Chris Cochran's here. Hello, mate. Yeah, you picked up a, a uh, like a decade capacitance box, didn't you? Looked like a really good one, actually. So what was the charge pin? Charge pin was pin 13. That is there. And then I'm gonna need some more wires. Uh, wire box. This is my 
this is my box of wires. It is not a pretty sight. Um, none of those really. Must be some more on this desk. Oh yeah, there are. A nice purple one. And then we want pin 11, so one, two, Pin 11 goes to our discharge pin, which I've put to ground, which I didn't need to. So discharge pin, just there. And then I need the sense line, don't I? Which is gonna be into A0. God, where's A0? Oh, there it is. A0, and that goes to there. Hopefully that's right. Yeah, I think so. So we're flashing away here. So let's have a little look at the output, shall we? Well, it's wrong. <laughs> let's go to this one. So you can see we're kicking out nine microfarads. Why is that? Did I put those capacitors around the wrong way? That's possible. Let's pull that out for a second. I'm going to use my multimeter to test it because I'm rubbish at reading these. And I'll be damned if I'm ever going to get used to it. No, that's a 10K. What's the code say? 10,000. Yeah, that's right. So this is our charge. And our discharge is, let's find out. Make sure I didn't pull it off the wrong thing. 220 ohms, yeah. Okay, well, I'll just check that I'm not doing anything wrong. So it's reading as, what, 10 microfarads. Oh no, that is right. It, I thought it read nanofarads. <laughs> That is right, sorry, I sort of got a bit confused there. What an idiot. Um, so, what, sorry, Chris, I'm just reading chat, I got distracted. So Chris has said grand total of 528 pounds. What, is that how much it was? And you got it for a pound? I totally don't understand. It's not. You are kidding, right? That's just not possible, surely. That's outrageous. So we've got, um, let's see if I can, can I just add this to the blooming screen? Add window, window capture. Okay. And then, oh, there we go. That was easy enough, wasn't it? Okay, so we've got um, we've got that showing up now. Let's uh, we don't need it to be there all the time, but we'll just uh, sort of adjust it a little, so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so that's the reading we're getting. So that's good. Let's bring the Muir head in, shall we? Um, come out a little bit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Literally takes up the whole place. Um, how am I going to attach this? I need some of those. Let's see what I've got. Need some of these clips. There's one. Sorry for all the bag noise, you could probably hear that. And there's another one. So let's hook this up. So let's get a black cable. And that one. Oh, you guys can't see that, can you? But there you go. You can now. They're. Um, they're just hooked on with these croc clips. 
uh, transform reset transformation. There we go. Oh no, hang on. <laughs> transform flip vertical and then transform flip horizontal. There we go, that's better. So um, those are hooked up. So we just need to replace this capacitor here. So let's get rid of that. Oh, we need another blooming lot of wires, don't we? Okay, so there's one. Let's put that into the charge area on green. Not that it particularly matters. It's not, um, doesn't have a polarity on these, I don't think. And then this one goes to ground. So we should read around, let's see if we can bring it down so you can see. So we should be reading around 300 and you can see we're on 300 narrow farads. So it is working correctly. I think these upper ranges, uh, I could probably focus this a bit better. These upper ranges here aren't going to make too much of a difference because that's the thousandth. So this is like picofarads, I guess. So we can move this up, but I don't think it's really got the resolution to read anything changing there. Make sure it's actually sitting in a position. Yeah, it's not reading anything. So if I take that down, we're not going to read picofarads. Let's try the hundredths. Okay, so that's now 100 nanofarads which is basically the equivalent of that. So, all right. So let's put these all the way up. So we know that essentially it's 1.11 or 1.12. Um, so what I'm going to do is just change the resistor, the charge resistor, and we'll see if that makes a difference. So let's throw in something a little bit higher. I picked up, oh God, they're all sat underneath this box. I picked up some higher ones, so let's try the 150K. Now, I'm not interested in the number as an actual um, sort of measurement of capacitance. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, I'll leave everything as it is, and we'll just switch out this capacitor, the charging one, for a different one. And we'll see if we can get some not sort of higher resolution, but fool it into thinking it's reading a larger capacitor, essentially. So let's just uh, switch that out and we'll see what happens. So it's reading as 17 microfarads now. So what happens if I change some of these values? So you can see we've got still got the one on there. That's fine. That almost does one. Okay, so let's try a larger one. That was 150. Let's just jump straight to one meg, I guess. Let's see what happens then. What I'm looking for is to be able to pull out these as usable things, or at least this one. So what the uh, the microcontroller will hopefully do is start reading the hundredth zone as capacitance, as a higher value so that we can use it. There we go. So I'm using a meg now um, so that essentially we're fooling it into thinking it's got a higher capacitance. So it's giving us a higher resolution. So now this is reading one microfarad for each one of these ranges there. Let's see if it reads anything for this one. Actually, it does. It reads in the narrow farads range, which is fine. Oh, it's a bit touchy there. So it's jumping between one nanofarads and a micro uh, nanofarads and a microfarad. So that's actually all right. We could probably make use of that. So let's get a different value coming out. Uh, Rob E's here. Hi, Rob. Rob, so we are um, 
we're using this beautiful Muir head uh, decade condenser. It's a capacitance box essentially. And we're going to be trying to drive this light, this crappy LED 12 volt bulb uh, and brighten and dim it essentially um, using the dials on here. I don't want to break the box. So we're just going to be reading the capacitance value, which uh, I can get out of these two probes at the top. So let's, what are we doing now? Oh yeah, we want to change the values that we're seeing. So I think that uh, thing's going to go away, but let's, uh, let's jump to this. So in our code, I probably want to be able to see what's going on in the chat. In our code, we can change some things in here. I don't need to change it an awful lot. I just want to be able to get a different value out. At the moment, it's choosing based on the capacitance value, what it's printing out. Now that's all right. Um, I kind of want to see nanofarads really um, as our full range. So it's re is it calculating microfarads first? It is. So we'll just we're just going to have we're going to get rid of all of these prints. Let's get rid of the elapsed time. Um, we'll get rid of that and actually we'll keep nanofarads in and let's remove all these if statements because I don't particularly care about those and then we'll upload it to the board and see what's what so let's throw that upload on so now it should give us a different value. Whoops. Maybe I should put serial print line instead. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so they're all essentially turned off. It's still giving me a reading but that would be just a stray capacitance, I would imagine. So if I jump up one, we're getting a value of 10,600. Three, four, okay. And then do we get some smaller values? Yeah, okay. So let's see if I can bring that back onto the screen. Okay, so this is our smaller range. We're going to have to filter out that um, this bit that's jumping around. So, so that's actually usable there. So we can use that dial, and we can use that one. What's the maximum? So the maximum, give it a while to charge up, is eleven seven hundred. Looks like. So let's say it's 11800 to give ourselves some room and we need to map that value. So let's um, just jump back here for a second. So we're going to map the value. We actually need to add some stuff in here about brightness. So we want um, int MOSFET pin equals, doesn't particularly, oh, it needs to be a PWM one. Which ones are those? Nine. And int brightness equals, we're using one that's, I'll just go for 255 for now. I can't see the keyboard, so <laughs> I'm trying to type. Um, where's the chat window gone? I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to type without being able to see it. Uh, Caro man says, have you ever opened the box? Want to know what's behind? Yeah, I did. There's a video. You can go and search for it. Uh, if you look for Muirhead on my channel, then you'll find it there. Um, I don't, it's not a destructive, um, teardown, so I don't actually get very far, but it is interesting nonetheless. 
So we want to have brightness, then we're going to need an analog pin. Pin mode. Whoops. So I want to copy that. Pin mode. MOSFET pin. Oh, that's my multimeter telling me it should be switched off. MOSFET pin, and then we want, uh, oh God, this is embarrassing. What have I done there? Where did that come from? Um, I can't remember how to do an analog thing. Hang on, let me. File examples, basic. We're back to the basic. So uh, where is it? Analog right mega? I would have thought there'd be a better one than that. Uh, I just want that. Except I'm pasting. Right, so we've got that. So I want to, the moment this is started actually, let's take that to 255 on our MOSFET pin. It might be the other way around. We'll just um, figure out what our MOSFET wants. And then we'll go down here for where micro we want nanofarads. So let's try uh, analog right MOSFET pin. Is that right? Capital P. MOSFET pin. And comma brightness. Okay, and well, then we need to do brightness. Oh, I'll look at your keyboard, David. Brightness equals map. So the map function, what it does, it takes an input, and in this case, it's going to be nanofarads. And then we're going to tell it what the maximum and minimum values are. So our minimum value on nanofarads is going to be 100. Uh, we're not going to, because we've got that sort of bouncing range, haven't we? So if I bring up the COM6 again, let's bring it all the way down. So we've got it bouncing between 99 and 100. So let's say that the it begins at 100. So essentially we're going to ignore that uh, to, oh no, we're going to have to watch it charge up again. Uh, what was it? 11, did we say 11,800? No, 11, 8,000. Okay, let's do that. To 11, 8, 1, 2, 3. And then I think I do comma 2, 5, 5, 2, 0. Hopefully that's right. I'm not quite sure. Let's, let's um, verify that, compile it. Yeah, that works. Okay, so our brightness is an int. That's cool. Nanofarads is a float. No, it's, yeah, it is a float. I'm casting it to a long, oh, actually we want to, we probably want to cast it to a long here, do we? Mm, no, it's fine. It'll be all right. Uh, so let's upload that and we'll jump back to the desk. So we've done that. Let's have a look at how we're going to drive this transistor. So it's a transistor MOSFET rather. So this is the, oh, let's just, you guys can have a little closer look at it. How on earth am I going to focus on that? Oh, roughly, there we go. So this is the NDP6020P, um, which is a P-channel FET. Um, it's one of those enhancement mode things, if that really makes a difference. Uh, it's RDS on is 0 0.05 ohms. Um, and VGS, I think, is um, it's pretty low. Let's have a look. Do, do, do. I'm looking at a data sheet just now. Uh, so 0 0.4 to 1 volt. 
So that's pretty good. So let's try and make this thing work, shall we? Oh, we're gonna have to, oh, I'm gonna have to do the focus thing again. But this time we're gonna focus on the breadboard, I think. There we go. Right, so let's bung that in there. Um, now we're gonna have to bring across 12 volts, I think. So let's unhook our bulb. Bring 12 volts across. Should I put my stupid face in again? Yeah, there we are. My stupid face is in it again. Okay, so hooking up a transistor, that can't be too difficult, can it? A MOSFET rather, if someone can remember how to do it. Right, we'll give it a go. Uh, PSI says RDS on is only 20 volts gate source. Okay. Drain to source breakdown voltage 20 volts. Hmm. Gate to source voltage. Hmm. Well, we'll give it a go. I've got them lying around. I might as well try it out, right? Uh, they had another similar to my one. What? You should have gotten that. If it was a pound. Jeez. Right. So, what's the blooming pinout for this? Gate drain source. Okay. So, gate drain source that way. Cool. So, our gate is coming from. Oh, let's leave some space at the back. Our gate's going to be coming from pin nine. So, let's find. A wire. It's not a very big wire, is it? Will this one do? It's a bit. Oh well, it'll be fine. So, oh, do I need a? Mm, do I need a resistor? I'm not going to use one for now. We'll see. Hopefully, the voltage from the Arduino will be enough to hold it low. Um, sorry, to dim it by holding it high. That's what I mean, right? Uh, and then, so gate, oh, what was it? Gate drain source, anyone? <laughs> I cannot remember. Gate drain source. Okay, so gate drain is my ground. So ground is this green one. So I'm running through the power supply for this because I've only got five volts on here. So we need a higher voltage. We're gonna need another wire. Something a bit more appropriate. That one will do. It's not a huge amount of current, so I don't need to be particularly worried. And so that's going to the bulb. And then the bulb goes to the voltage, right? Yeah, that's right. So plug that in like that. <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced that this is going to work out how I expect it to first time. We'll see. I'm going to put that there so you guys can see it. Someone's probably screaming at me in chat and saying, no, do not plug it in there. Um, we'll see. Oh, Chris has posted a link. Careful, everyone. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sure it will be something interesting, so go and have a look. 
Oh, I've just closed a window. Never mind. We're we're still on it. Right now, I think, I think I can just turn it on. All right. Well, let's. Oops. Okay. I don't know if anyone heard that noise, but my power supply made something on my computer disconnect. <laughs> Is it the camera? No. Okay. So let's turn this power supply down. I don't think these LEDs will come on at 8 volts, but we'll do it. Okay, nothing's happening yet. Let's, comes if I turn this down. I don't know which way I've mapped it. Nope. Okay, let's take it up to 9 volts. Hmm. Okay. Um, where is my ground? Ground, power, ground. What's that going to? Okay. Let's just try powering this bulb for a second. Because it isn't working. Okay, it does work. So what have I done wrong? Uh, let's check the pin out again. Gate drain source. So gate drain, yeah, source. Yeah, that should work. Let's have another look. Uh, gate drain source. I'm going to just keep saying that until it works. <laughs> That's basically how it works. Let's have a look. So where's my thingy pin? Right, so with this one, if I hold the gate low on a P-channel FET, is that right? If I hold the gate low on a P-channel FET, right, it should work, right? <laughs> Just saying right a lot. Yes, it does. Okay. And it's going to stay on until it goes high, I think, actually. So have I got... Yeah. I'll just turn it high. Um, okay, so what is my board kicking out? Let's find out, shall we? So let's print out the resistance, not resistance, the brightness after I've mapped it and see what we're getting. Because I th would have thought that should work, but obviously not. Let's upload that. Oh, it's the Arduino that got undone from the board. Brilliant. So let's just go down to G7. Ah, yeah. Okay, so that was the thing that... That's the thing that didn't work. Let's compile that and reselect the port and upload. There we go, that's better. So now it should be printing out the brightness. So this is the 0 to 255 value, but it's giving me 255. Let's see if we can... Okay, that should work. Right, let's just plug that back in on pin nine. I'll we'll throw a resistor in. Doesn't have to be very low or high, does it? Let's try something like a... Oh God, what have I got? Um, 1.5K, it really particularly matters. Oh, come on now. And then I'm going to throw that directly into pin 9. Hopefully I understand how this works. Oh, 
<laughs> no, I don't. Am I doing it right? What am I doing wrong? Should I just use a different blue in chip? <laughs> right, so that is there. Oh, wait. Is that what it is? They're not, the grounds aren't shared, are they? No, they are not, David. That is a problem. So let's sort that out. Let's use ground rail over here. Ground here. Ground there. And then oh, we're going to be running the ground through these tiny little wires, but it's only a few hundred milliamps, so it's probably okay. And then there we go. The ground was not shared, which is silly. I should have remembered that. So now it should dim. Excellent. There we go. Someone's probably shouting me in chat saying, your grounds aren't shared. That's your problem. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I forgot to... Um, to share the grounds because we've got two different two different power supplies here. So we've got the nine volts coming from my Tenma supply over there, and then we're using five volts from the USB. If I had, do I have a seven eight oh five somewhere here? I would just use that. Not that I can see. What's that? That's oh, a two N three nine oh four. So yeah, this should it should turn off completely. Ah, there we go. Brilliant. So it's off completely. And then if I turn up this little one. <laughs> that's it. That's the little one. <laughs> we just get some flickering mess. That's the problem. It's bouncing up and down a bit. But that's all right, isn't it? So we've got... Um, that's fairly good quite bright. What does it use at max? 300 milliamps, so slightly shy of what it should be, but that's not a problem. It looks good. Yeah, you're probably right about having a pull-up resistor. Uh, it would have to be pulled up to 5 volts, though, because I can't pull up the pin um, to the source voltage of the bulb. But it seems to be working okay. Let me see if I can, if I reset this. Is that bulb going to go nuts? No, it seems all right, actually. So what I'm doing is I'm forcing that pin high at the start. So we're not seeing any kind of flicker here, which is good. Uh, PSI key said uh, it's got an inbuilt uh, voltage regulator. It does, but I don't want to use um, an actual development board. I'm just going to use an IC and build a little project box, I think. So, hello. I thought I'd put myself back in. Uh, so, yeah, I want to use a uh, project box. Let's have a look at the value, actually. So, if I jump back to here, we'll be able to see. We've got 255 up, up there somewhere. This isn't really in focus on that bulb, is it? Let's go over there and focus on the bulb. We'll just push everything along. There we go, right. And uh, we wanna see this in a little bit darker. Let's just dim it down a little bit. So we can see our value is 255. As I turn these up, that value should go down because we want to uh, essentially reduce the voltage level that's on the, the gate. Oh, that's not great, is it? But it's sort of on the smaller range. That one doesn't... Uh, The contacts are a little bit dirty, so you can see that's that's actually in that range, but if I wiggle it, 
you can see it. Let's turn that one off because it's just creating problems, isn't it? And then this one. So we've got, we're starting to jump down now. So you can see it's at 253, 254, bit, of, bit flickery. It might be useful to read the value and then average it over time. Um, not an awful lot, just create like four different values and then uh, read it. So it's, it is flickering up and down a bit. I don't think I mind that if I'm honest. I kind of like that it, um, <laughs> I kind of like that it's a bit crap. So yeah, we're down to 233. Three. So we're getting a range of what, 22 on this, um, on this second one. So that's our very dim mode. So let's turn that, well, we can leave that one. And so hopefully when we turn this one all the way up to 10, we'll get close to 255. We might have to employ the last one. In fact, it's probably a little bit too bright for you to even see, too dim rather for you to even see. So for each step of this, we're jumping down by about, was that 13? Yeah, by about 13 for each one. So it's got 130 in that range. Does it go down to zero? Let's throw this up. No, it doesn't. And that's because in my code, I set it to 17800, 8000 rather. So let's change that now and upload the new code. So I've changed it. I've taken a thousand off essentially. So let's see what change that makes. So now it should be giving us zeros or something similar to that. We've got one. Let's change that to six then. Actually, let's change it to six, five. And we'll see what happens then. We're getting zeros. Zero, one, zero, zero. That's cool. Let's see if we can just, oh, I didn't like doing that. There we go. So it is completely off now. That's great. It's drawing no current from the power supply, at least not detectable. So we're not, there's no like leakage there. This one, that one, that range doesn't really work. Okay, that's cool. Well, that is me done. I'm happy enough with that. Um, I don't think this is a project that most people are going to end up. Um, most people are going to end up doing because uh, you probably don't have a like capacitance box or a useful capacitor. Uh, let's just turn this power supply off. Um, a useful capacitor to do that with, but it's been fun, and it's a nice change, isn't it, for me to actually achieve something on a stream? Because ordinarily, um, I just end up drinking whiskey or cold coffee like that and then it's usually just it doesn't work does it so yeah we've um i think that's it i'm gonna stop the stream i think i'm happy that um it's complete i think uh so thank you very much for coming along i know it's very short notice i had planned to do this tomorrow so uh i'm i'm glad it's it's done what i'll do is i'll i don't know if i want to get a board printed or if i'm going to do it on perf board or something it's only like 300 to 400 milliamps so perf board will be fine i've probably got some around here somewhere yeah there's a bit over here i mean just this sort of vera board will be fine i'll use a bit of that um and then i'll just get a one of those dc power plugs and uh i've probably got one but i think it's 12 volts so i want a 9 volt one so uh how amazing is that? It, it worked. So thank you very much for coming along. Um, and I, <laughs> it's so strange because usually we spend hours. This would have been, this would have been like a three hour stream of me trying to fix it. But didn't, I think I, I used your help once and that was it. So it's pretty impressive. Anyway, I don't remember really how to stop the stream. Oh, do you remember we were going to do this? Hang on. If I press stop now, will it just stop? can't remember. I think it has a pop-up. Let me check. Um, and we're going to do this countdown thing again. The one I did last time when I pressed the button prematurely. Um, does anyone have any questions actually before I decide that we're going to close it down? Any questions? In the meantime, do I have anything exciting? Oh, I finally found, um, no, it, and now it's not here. Oh, no, there it is. 
I finally found this blooming pit kit thing. Do you remember how uh, Julian was uh, messing around with a pit kit? Well, I found the one that I ordered. I had only found the cables before, so I've got a pick somewhere, a little pick microcontroller, and I thought I would give it a go uh, using one. Um, I don't know why, I've just never used like assembly language before, so it'll be nice to, to try it out. Uh, okay, no questions, we're gonna stop the stream. So let's see, if I press stop stream, are you sure you want to be, want to stop the stream? Okay, I'm gonna click okay when I get to one. And so you'll be able to see if it ever cuts people off because it always seems to, doesn't it? So uh, five, four, three, two, one.